Hey, 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 how are you doing? Apple recently released iOS 18, which offers a lot new features on Apple's devices. Of course, some people would argue that some of those quote-unquote new features are already available in Android devices for years. I won't make any commentary on that, and instead, I'll focus on one of the new features that interest me. And that's a math-related thing as you might expect. In the new OS, Apple made changes to the calculator app. Before the update, users can only use the scientific mode when the screen is in landscape mode. With this new update, they've added a button on the bottom left corner that offers the option to switch from basic mode to scientific mode, and vice versa. It's a nice gesture, yes, but I think it's long overdue. If you look closely at the options, you'll also see the Convert option, which is basically a converter app. This converter mode offers conversion functionality for different measurements including angle, area, currency, data, energy, etc. Here's a complete list of all the quantities available. Basically, this app eliminates the need for a third-party converter app. This is also a cool feature too, but I think it isn't a big deal. Now let's look at what I think is a game changer in this update. In the same button in the calculator app, we also see a math notes option. If we press that, we are sent to what seems a typical notes app. But it isn't really the same notes app we had before. This new one is good because it allows some math stuff in it. Here's a snippet of what it can do. For the rest of this video, I will assess all the math stuff it can do. Before we proceed, it's also worth pointing out that we don't have to go to the calculator app to use this math notes feature. We can also just go to the usual notes app and it will work just as good. Although we have to tick one box in the setting to automate the math feature instead of just suggesting it to us every time. Let's begin. Just a heads up, for all the features that we will be looking at, note that the operation is triggered once we write the equal sign or something equivalent. The math notes feature allows easy conversion from unit to another. Just write the quantity, unit, and the equal sign, and voila, it spits out the converted value. I haven't checked all, but I think all units that are available in the convert mode that I showed earlier are also available here. One key disadvantage from this, though, is that we cannot set to which unit we convert. I guess that the default units are based on the region where you are. For example, in terms of currency, the default unit in my iPad is PHP for Philippine Peso. Arithmetic operations are also doable. All of addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division are easily done. Based on a couple of trials, I have to mention here that we must be careful in writing the decimal point. There are few instances where the app treats my decimal point as a comma. I'm not sure if it's a bug or just a sign that my handwriting downright bad or just confusing. For addition, we can also just line up the numbers in a column and then add a bar at the end to trigger the operation. I've also tested if the app can deal with negative numbers. And yes, it does quite smoothly. Fractions are also handled just fine. The only disadvantage here is that the output is never a fraction. So if you're dealing with two fractions and would like to know the result as a fraction, this won't help you. Negative numbers and fractions are okay, but how about complex numbers? It seems that the app does not recognize complex numbers yet. Next question, can the app evaluate combinations of the operations? The answer is yes, it does, and it follows the convention on the order of operations. I've also checked if constants are known to the app. And yes, Euler constant E and the circle constant pi are both available. 
For the Tau lovers out there, I'm sorry to say, but it's not saved in the app. Other constants like the acceleration due to gravity, Planck's constant and speed of light are not available either. We now look at functions. The app allows saving a value for a variable and then evaluating a function at this value. We can do this for multiple variables as well. Note that we can easily change the value of the variable or variables by tapping the value we set and hovering over the slider option that appears. Unfortunately, the app does not recognize the standard notation for functions and cannot evaluate. Next, I checked whether it can solve an equation. I tried a linear equation with one unknown, but no, it cannot solve the equation. I tried a system of equations too, but it seems that it doesn't have that capability just yet. Let's move on to some known math functions. Let's start with radicals. It evaluates them with no issues. Absolute value functions are also available. The only problem I have with this one is probably my handwriting again. The app fails to recognize the bars as absolute value symbols sometimes. We probably have to write them much longer than the number so the app won't confuse them as ones. Now this next one is really surprising for me. The app actually recognizes floor and ceiling functions. I did not see this one coming, to be honest. Most physical calculators do not even have this feature yet. This is really cool. Factorials are also known to the app. What's very, very, very surprising, though, is that it allows the valuation of factorials for non-whole numbers. For example, it knows that 2.5 factorial is about 3.32, and pi factorial is about 7.19. Wow, that's really impressive since most physical scientific calculators don't even allow that. This just means that somehow, the app knows the analytic continuation of factorials, which is the gamma function. What's weird about this, though, is that the app cannot evaluate the factorial of negative numbers, which should be easy if it can value gamma functions. A little bit inconsistent, but I'll take it. Since we're talking about factorials, it occurred to me to check combinations and permutations. Unfortunately, it does not recognize the normal symbols for combinations and permutations. Anyway, we move on to other functions. Exponentials are easily done. As mentioned earlier, the constants e and pi are known and hence can be used here. Logarithms are also doable. It's worth noting that there are no issues in the valuation as long as we are valuating within the function's domain. For example, we know that logarithms are only defined in the real number system for non-negative bases excluding one and for values positive values of x. If we try to evaluate outside those restrictions, the app does not provide a value which makes sense. Trigonometric functions are also available for both degree and radian measures. The app uses radians by default, so we have to include the degree symbol if we want to work with degrees instead. Inverse trigonometric functions are also available, but only for the primary functions. Sine, cosine, and tangent. We can use both the arc and inverse symbol notations to do these. Note that if we use the inverse notation for the reciprocal functions, the app provides an output, but those outputs are wrong because the app treats the inverse notation as an exponent instead. This limitation is not surprising since most physical scientific calculators do not have inverse functions for secant, cosecant, and cotangent as well.
Another surprising feature is that hyperbolic functions are available, except for hyperbolic secant and cosecant. It's a bit inconsistent that hyperbolic cotangent is available while the other two are not. Inverse hyperbolic functions for the primary functions are also available, but only in the inverse notation. The arc notation is not recognized by the app. Note again that while the app outputs a value for what seems to be inverse hyperbolic cotangent, its value is wrong because the notation was treated as an exponent. Those are the functions that I've checked by far. Let me know in the comments if I've missed anything else. Let's look at another nice feature from the app. It allows graphing of functions. Basically, all the functions that we've uncovered earlier can be graphed here and more. For example, we graph the line y equals x here, and then we also graph the parabola y equals x squared. As we entered the second equation, we are given the option to plot it on the same graph as before or in a new one. Depending on your purpose, you can select either of them. The app can surprisingly plot polynomials of high degree as well. Note how I easily change the exponent here by using a slider option on the exponent. This slider becomes available by just tapping the character we want to update. We can also do this for coefficients and constants. Absolute value, floor, ceiling, and factorial functions are also available. See how the factorial function is continuous here in certain intervals here instead of just dots? This just backs up what I said earlier, that the app calculates the gamma function. What a lovely sight! Exponentials and logarithms are doable too. Trig functions are available too. My only concern here is that the axis intervals cannot be adjusted. For the graph of trig functions, it is particularly helpful to change the intervals to multiples of pi's. I hope Apple consider that in future update, not that it is the most important one, but I hope they do. Inverse trig functions for sine, cosine, and tangent are available too. Then we have the graph of the hyperbolic functions that were mentioned earlier. and the inverses as well. All the functions I've checked so far are explicit for y. Unfortunately, there is nothing more into it. The app cannot graph implicitly defined functions like the equation of a circle. To graph this, we have to write an explicit expression for y. Again, I hope that Apple considers an update about this. Okay, that's quite a lot already, but let me check some more things. I tried if the app can do summations and pi products, but it can't.
I checked if the app can do at least basic calculus stuff, but it can't. It can't find derivatives, evaluate limits, and evaluate integrals. I wasn't hoping for it, but I'm still sad that it's not available. Would be really cool to doodle integrals here and there. I also checked if the app does linear algebra. But no, it does not recognize vectors and matrices. Too bad. Lastly, I checked if it can do some number theory things. It wasn't able to do calculus and linear algebra, so I did not have any more expectations. But hey, it was able to find remainders. Well, it does, but not all of them are accurate. I wasn't able to determine the threshold where it provides accurate answers, but I think the error is committed beyond the point where the app loses integer precision, which is pretty common in any programming language. This implies that the app likely evaluates the exponentials first before finding the remainder, rather than implementing number theory principles such as Fermat's and Wilson's theorems. For the last example I tried, I got an overflow error which furthers this idea. Overall, if you're dealing with big numbers, I discourage you from trusting the results of this app. I've also tried Todiant and Lambda functions here, but they don't work either. I guess we're still a long way to go before we see number theory integrations in the math notes. Anyway, that's all I've uncovered so far after days of trying and retrying. Here's a summary of all those including the limitations and the features that aren't available entirely that I hope they consider. If there's anything I've missed and other things you'd like to comment on, let me know in the comments. And that's it for this video. To be honest, I'm really impressed at the capabilities I've uncovered so far. Sure, it's far from the maths of Wolfram Alpha, but for something that isn't really designed for math stuff, I think this math notes feature really did well. I honestly think that this would be helpful for teachers and students alike. Although I'd like to add that while this feature is available in all Apple devices updated with iOS 18, I believe that the features will only be maximized when using iPads, especially when paired with Apple Pencils. Thanks for watching and see you on the next one. If you haven't subscribed yet, please consider doing so to help me grow the channel. Thank you.